When you're setting up a shop with WooCommerce, there's a lot to keep in mind, and inevitably, some things are going to slip through the cracks. So recently, I asked a bunch of WordPress experts and agency owners on Twitter what they thought was the biggest mistake you can make when setting up shop on WooCommerce. And I was pretty shocked by some of their responses. Let's take a look at what they said, and I'll go into more detail about each of the mistakes as we go along, as well as how to fix them or prevent them from happening. As always, links to everything I'm talking about are in the description below this video. Enjoy. So here's the original tweet that I made. And I noticed there was a couple of different themes of replies. And the first theme I noticed was everything to do with payments. So Chris said not offering multiple payment options. Now this is something you do need to be aware of. I'll just show you right here some data from the US e commerce market. At the moment, digital wallets, that's like Apple Pay, Google Pay and whatnot count for 50% of transactions in the US. And in the future, that's projected to be as high as 61% by 2027. You can see that that will be at the expense of credit cards going down, as well as debit cards and other payment options will remain similar. But the main thing you need to take away from this is that adding Apple Pay and Google Pay to your checkout is an essential part. Otherwise, you are just leaving out half of your potential customers. Now, Anita here says site owners do not test their payment gateways to make sure they work before launching. Now, you can test your payment payment setup in a few ways. But I recommend first testing in sandbox or testing mode. And then after you make it live, also run a real life test with real money going through all of the steps like a customer would do. And if anything, try to break it so you see what might go wrong before it happens. So just for example, this is Woo Payments, and you can see that Woo Payments is in sandbox mode right now. So you can set this up yourself in any of the payment providers. And by doing this, you can put in some dummy credit card information and just run through the entire checkout process. So you can see what will happen after that transaction is completed. In terms of emails, I'll touch on that later. But obviously, the best thing to do here is to just run through transactions transaction and see what happens with the emails. Put in some other email addresses, not just your own, and make sure that those emails are being sent. The next tweet I wanted to touch on is from Blake, and he says that the biggest mistake is forgetting to change Stripe from test mode to live mode. Once you're done doing all of those tests in sandbox or test mode, make sure you actually flick it over to live mode so customers can actually make payments and receive your products. And finally, in terms of payments, another mistake you can make is not setting up your taxes correctly. Now, I'm not going to give a lot of information in this video. Rather, I will link you through to this documentation page here on WooCommerce, how to set up taxes in WooCommerce. And if you need some more specific help with taxes, I recommend contacting contacting some professional help in terms of accounting or lawyers. So you know for sure that you set this up correctly from the beginning. Now, the next two tweets are both about the same thing. And I was really shocked by this. Greg says, not disabling WordPress.org's illegal tracking of data from your Woo site. And they link to this tweet from Cyber, as well as Alan says, same sort of thing. So let's check out that original tweet by Cyber. They say, fun fact, WooCommerce collects your sensitive information without asking for consent. Luckily, it merely consists of 1000 data points. I'm detecting some sarcasm there. And then she dives into it and you can read this tweet. I'll link it in the description as well. Now, the main thing is when you are setting up WooCommerce for the first time on your site, there is this screen here and I'll, I'll put that on the video where you can essentially enable or disable the data. Now they get really cheeky here because they've pre enabled this and you kind of have to opt out of it, which shouldn't be illegal in the European Union at least now. So that's a little bit sneaky of them. There's more information here. And this is what I wanted to show you how you can disable this tracking right now on your WooCommerce site. If you head to WooCommerce settings, then click on the advanced tab and go to WooCommerce.com. Com. You can disable the tracking by unchecking this box here. You can also disable suggestions while you're at it and save changes. That's going to be cutting off that data channel right then and there for you. All right, let's move on to some other tweets about various different settings on WooCommerce. Here, I want to highlight AJ's tweet, not designing thank you page and email according to the store branding and not providing customers an invoice or an account page and also not setting up taxes correctly. So that's 
highlights quite a few different mistakes. It's not just one, but I appreciate the thoroughness there, AJ. Let me just talk about a few of those things. If you want to set up a thank you page, you can do so at any time by just adding a new page. I recommend giving it a name like confirmation and then go in there and edit this page, maybe using a template from the rest of your site. So you can follow the same design format as whatever your home page is or about page, etc. I don't really have anything set up here for this video, but that's just to give you an idea that it's really simple to set up. Now, I also wanted to talk about the email branding. I have actually have an entire video about this. If you want to check it out, I'll link it up here. Here on the emails tab in WooCommerce settings, you can see all of the different emails that may or may not go out depending on the status of an order. And you can manage the email or when you scroll down to the bottom, you can see what the different base colors, background colors are. And you can also preview the email template. But you may agree with me that this is not really something that most stores should be using. You should really upgrade this. And I have a couple of suggestions for you. So my first suggestion is to find a plugin for this. Find something like the email decorator or yay mail. And I recommend these because they are pretty simple to customize and set up the emails. And for most people, that will be enough. Another option is to go with an entire email sort of management system, such as OmniSend, and you can set up all of your email flows from there, but that won't cover your basic confirmation emails. So you still need to do this step in order to customize the order emails. Now, my boss Katie and CEO at Barn2 Plugins wrote, forgetting to untick the discourage search engines box after going live. So let's take a look at that in the settings. So if you go to your WordPress settings and click on reading, you can see this little box here at the bottom, search engine visibility. When you're ready for your site to go live and be indexed on search engines, uncheck this box. Make sure you set up a reminder or add it to your workflow for your go live checklist. List, so you don't forget to do this. Now, another little tip from WP TotalCraft is to make global product attributes as opposed to making local product attributes. So what does that mean? Well, the idea of a local product attribute is something where you're in this edit product screen and you go down here and you can click on attributes and then add new. But if I click on add existing, these are the global attributes. And where do you set those up? You go to products and click on attributes. And then you can add new ones here or edit existing ones on the side. These are global attributes. And when you set them up, you're going to save so many headaches later on down the track. So definitely a good tip. Thank you, WP TotalCraft. And right below it is our next tweet from Anne. And she says, when you ensured that your site is accessible and your cookie banner is messing that up. Sounds like a big headache. So I've linked a couple of resources in the description below. For example, this one here, a Medium article by Stephanie Newman do's and don'ts of accessible cookie banners. And she goes into a lot of great detail about accessibility with regards to adding these cookie banners. And if that's not enough, there's one more here on makethingsaccessible.com written by Steve. And this is a cookie banners case study. And they have a lot more information about cookie banners and regulations related to them. So there you go. Now, the final tweets are more or less general thoughts maybe about WooCommerce as a whole, but we'll get into that. Ian says, it's a big mistake to spend more time on the tech and site setup than on marketing. And I think I know what you mean by this because without marketing, you just don't have any customers and all that time you spent setting up your site is wasted. You can always make changes to and improve your site further down the track once you have some customers coming in. But if you don't have any marketing channels to bring those customers there in the first place, you're essentially wasting your time. Then Dirk here suggests that you shouldn't try to change the shopping experience to something completely different from what the users are used to. Well, it is possible to pull this off. It takes a lot of experience and a lot of work, and you're not going to nail it on your first try. So it's better to establish your business using a traditional method first before you branch out into something a little bit more exotic or unique. Finally, we have two tweets kind of expressing the same idea, one from Kevin and one from Beck. They basically say the mistake is to install WooCommerce in the first place. Obviously, this is a bit of an exaggeration. There are plenty of situations where WooCommerce isn't necessarily the best option, but alternatives like Shopify do also have their downsides. However, they are rapidly growing in popularity. And at the end of the day, it's just because people actually like using them. And that actually brings me to an interesting announcement of sorts. Now, as a software business, Barn2 has relied entirely on the WordPress plugin ecosystem up to this point. But we've recognized a 
little bit of a shift in the waters, a little bit of a change, and we're ready to branch ourselves out into Shopify apps starting this year in 2025. Now there's lots of details for us yet to work out. Watch this space. We've already released some blog posts talking about Shopify specifically, so I'll link those below in case you're interested in giving them a read. So what other WooCommerce mistakes can you think of? Let us know in the comments down below. I would love to read them. Then if you want to see five awesome e-commerce websites that are absolutely killing it, you can check out this video next. And of course, thanks for watching.